Guys, here's a friendly reminder. Hackers are getting more sophisticated each year. And if you're not careful, you're going to be in trouble. Are you doing everything you can to protect yourself online? I've been a NordVPN customer long before they were a show sponsor. This software allows me to safely browse the internet without being traced. But NordVPN is now more than just a VPN. They have just introduced threat protection, giving you even more comprehensive security against cyber threats. It blocks trackers, intrusive, malicious ads, and steers you away from harmful websites and files. Enjoy a cleaner, safer, and more private internet. Their advanced encryption still hides your location and encrypts all the data you send and receive, and one account secures six devices. Try NordVPN risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash sunnen, or use the code sunnen to get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Or click on the link in the description to get this special deal. Joe Rogan said something a couple weeks ago, and Joe made a very simple comment where he just said, I think when Conor McGregor comes back, he should do a tune-up fight. Joe furthered that thought by saying they do it in boxing all the time. Now, I fully understand this concept that Conor McGregor was hurt. He was injured. He's coming back. Your comeback fight is never going to be your best performance. You're questioning yourself. No matter how brave and how proud you look, you are questioning yourself. You will think about that. Boxers a lot of times get knocked out and their career is different forever. People that study boxing from a very lazy and misinformation standpoint will tell you that once your chin gets tested that way, that you lose your chin. That is not what happens. It is psychological. You think you're invincible and you have every reason to believe that because you never have been knocked out. As soon as you get knocked out, you now sense your own mortality and you are hesitant and you are gun shy. Every time you throw a shot, that's when you're open to take a counter. That's when that chin is going to be exposed. So now you're not throwing the same. You're not coming the same. You're questioning yourself. You're hesitant. Your output isn't the same. That's what ends up happening. It's very psychological once you get knocked out one time. So I only bring that to you. Anderson Silva talked about this when he came back. Chris Weidman is getting ready to go on this same journey, and he's being a little bit more open to talk about it. Tim Sylvia had an injury. I mean, it's just one of these things where you do have to test it when you come back. I get the concept of a tuna fight, but now Daniel Cormier is waiting on it. Said, yes, I think that's a very good idea. Now, let's look into that just a little bit. First off, there's no promoter in the world that could ever use that term and make it draw. You just can't. But okay, we would still know if a tuna fight was going to happen. We're not going to disclose that. We don't put that on the poster. But what are you going to do for a tune-up fight? And, and the reason I'm bringing this to you guys, the term tune-up fight does very much come from the world of boxing. There is two distinctions that make that possible. First off, there is not a set contract. So you do not have to pay the guy the same as if he was taking on contenders, as if he was taking on somebody that was as big of a draw. That's paramount number one but number two and this seems to be missed and not understood when they do a tune-up fight in boxing they bring in a guy that is not with the organization they bring in a guy who does not have multiple fights within the organization either prior or in the future he's brought in from somewhere else on a one-off it is a lamb coming to slaughter and he absolutely understands it and everybody knows it within the ufc that human being doesn't exist i mean let's just play the game guys can we get connor somebody out of the top 10 no no, that's silly. He's going to be a main event. He's going to be on pay-per-view. We're going to have somebody within the top 10. We get it. Who is it at 155 that you believe is the tune-up fight? I don't have that list in front of me. Let me throw you some names off the top of my head. Do you think that Connor can go up, tune up, easy, get good work, get good minutes, win the whole thing, not be in jeopardy against Benny? Do you think that against Ferguson? Do you think that against Chandler? Do you think that Gaethje's the guy? Is Oliveira who should we call? Should we go over to Poirier? I'm running out of fingers here. Who is it that you believe would be the tune-up fight? And once you realize that person doesn't exist, there is no guarantee that he's going to go out there and get good work. you got to understand, you're betting tens of millions of dollars. Quite literally. You're going to honor the contract of both guys. You're not going to be able to move that because it's a lesser job. You're not bringing in an outside guy that's never been here before. That's what they do in boxing. Within the Ultimate Fighting Championship, you're not coming there to learn how to fight. You have well proven that you know how to fight. 
Should we bump him up to 170 and play the same game? What person is it that you feel fits that criteria? And if you're dealing with Connor, you have to at some point, and I believe we're at that point, you have to assume every single fight he has is his last one. You are not going to get him back. He is not coming back. And he is to that point in his career. I don't know what that number is. But I do believe if we were to ask Connor himself, he would give us a number. He would be guessing, of course, like anybody would. But I think that you would be surprised how small that night. I'm going to do three more. Realistically, I got five more in me. Hey, realistically, I'm going to do two more. Hey, this next one could be the last. Well, I think it's. I think we're in one of those positions. So you're making a hell of a gamble. At what difference does it make? You guys want to know a fight for Connor that nobody's discussing? You want to know what? It, you want to know a fight for Connor they should think about doing? Michael Chiesa. That's the one that has absolutely never been discussed by anybody. I personally believe that there's a gag order. I personally believe there's a reason that Kiesa has never called out McGregor. But just to remind you guys, when the bus incident between Connor and the Dolly and Khabib took place, there was lawsuits that followed that. And Kiesa was one of them. Kiesa got glass into his eye. It was a very bad experience. I think there's a story there, personally. Whether that turned into fruition and that turned into a fight, I've always thought there was a story there that should be told, but neither guy has told it. Neither guy's manager has told it. Neither camp has told it. No trainers have told it. So I've just elected on my own that there must be some kind of a gag order in place. But that's the match. That's a very interesting match from a stylistic standpoint. That checks a lot of boxes. I don't know how bullish I am on the idea. I'm not against the idea that Conor rucks right into a world title fight at one of two weight classes. Chandler and, or I apologize, Oliver and Gaethje have both made it very clear. Yes, I will take on Conor. I understand it, the winner of Islam and Benny should be next. I will take on Conor in the deal. They both said it. What are you going to tell the champion that did everything right? He doesn't get what he wants? I mean, it's one of those things. Just because you want to take away from Conor because he didn't want to satisfy him. It's one of these weird things. There is no tune-up fight. But there's no tune-up fight because we use guys within the organization already. I always hear these comparisons of MMA to boxing. I, I don't fully understand it. The leadership in boxing has done such an abysmal job. Why you would want to go from a sport that is coveted and looked at more fondly to one that is so corrupt that the government had to step in to regulate. I haven't the foggiest idea. I don't know of anything from boxing that you would want to copy, truly. But just so you understand this tune-up fight business, when you're saying that and you're trying to juxtapose it to boxing, here's the difference. The guy that's brought in to do the job, to be the tune-up, is not with the organization and he is not given a multi-fight contract and he may never be back. It is by design somebody to get this guy work. It is a sparring partner. It is not a coveted session. There has not been a tuna fight in history that I'm aware of that went on the top of the bill. There was a marquee fight. I know that they exist. But it's just not what we do over here. I just don't know how you're going to get it. I will suggest for you that there are names out there that are not the likely suspects, that have incredible stories, that would do incredible business. I like the kiss idea. I've never heard anybody say it before. I don't know where Kies is at in terms of did he win his last fight or did he not? I, I know he was on a good streak there for a minute. I don't know specifically his last one. There's a lot of reasons why that match makes sense. Not to mention you're going to get work. I mean, above everything else, if you don't want to get a guy hurt, you want to get him work, you put him in there with somebody that doesn't knock out a whole bunch of people. He's grindy. He grapples. He, I, I Just offering for you. I'd like to know what you think about that idea specifically, but I also do wonder in a, another vein, how come that has never been discussed? How do you have a lawsuit? How do you have something so personal and let you never have a call out? It would seem that you'd want to deal with that guy. It seems that you'd want to adjudicate that somewhere else than with an arbitration. To me, I'll bring it up. I'm floating ideas. But as far as this tune-up business, it's, it's very rude. It's very rude to make believe that some guy's going to come in and be a tune-up fight. That's just not what happens over here. And if you were going to try to orchestrate that behind the scenes, but stay within the top 10, which is a, a, a level of reasonableness, who are you going to go with? Who within the top 10 of either one of those divisions? We know Connor's coming back to one of them. We don't know which one. Who within the top 10 fits that bill? It seems like a very silly topic to bring up. It seems like a, a misunderstanding of the difference between boxing and MMA. Not to mention, it's flat rude.